Hello, this is Alicia Romero, one of the lecturers of Stats 250, bringing you your second Stats 250 Friday focus for the week of March 20th through March 27th. Congratulations, we have made it through our first week of virtual learning, so please take a moment to celebrate our progress. It has been an interesting week with many learning curves for each of us. We are all learning together the members of the instructional team are learning about how to package our course material in a fashion that's accessible to all. We're all working hard to constantly improve your virtual learning experience. You, as an active member of this now virtual Stats250 course, are learning new approaches to interact with the course content while adapting to a new situation. On behalf of the entire Stats250 instructional team, we want to thank you for all your hard work this past week and remind you that your health and your well-being are of most importance. If anything comes up that is keeping you from completing your tasks for this course, please be sure to communicate it with us so that together we can work out a plan. We are in it together. Everyone needs to be supported, supportive of each other and understanding. Now, I want to share with you some details of what your virtual Stats to 50 experience will look like this week. First, let's start with some reminders. We have extended the due dates for the following assignments, which are now due Sunday, March 22nd at 5 p.m. Remember that all the due date times are in Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Homework 7, Lab 08 Wrap-Up Quiz, and remember that successfully completing the wrap-up quiz will earn you full credit for Lab 8 Attendance, Lab 8 iClicker, and Lab 8 Ticket. What does successfully completing a lab wrap-up quiz implies? Well, it simply implies that you correctly responded to at least 75% of the questions on that quiz. For this specific quiz, that means that at least six of the eight questions are correct. You also have your MWrite peer reviews that are due this Sunday. Because we have extended these due dates, we will have additional office hours and lab instructor check-ins throughout the weekend to help you answer any questions that might come up as you work through this material. Now let's move through the topics for this week. Let's start with um, highlighting the materials for last week. Last week we learned about analyzing data that comes from two quantitative variables when these are collected in pairs. Analyzing data that comes from a match pair study design. For pair data designs, it is the differences that we're interested in examining. Hence, you might recall having to see the word differences quite often this past week. This week, we will learn techniques for analyzing data that comes from independent samples when the measurements in one sample are not related to measurements in the other sample. If the response variable is quantitative, we might compare two independent groups by looking at the difference between the two means. Let's look at an example. Let's say we wish to assess if there's a significant difference between the mean salary for all major league baseball players and the mean salary for all National Basketball Association players. These two groups are independent. There is no connection between players. So therefore, we are interested in comparing these two population mean salaries. Now let's say we want to include in this analysis the mean salary for all hockey players. We now have three independent groups, so we need a new inference procedure to compare three or more independent samples. ANOVA is a method that allows us to extend the ideas we learn in this chapter nine, comparing two population means, to now include three or more independent samples. We have decided to focus on the big ideas of ANOVA, but not go over all the details for this chapter, which implies that we're skipping most of chapter 10 this winter term. 
Now let's look at the tasks we have for you. The first task this week is to watch the pre-recorded lectures, actively following along the course content by completing your lecture notes. In efforts to enhance the virtual experience of Stats 250 for everyone, we now have the lecture recordings in a variety of ways. Through the lecture recording sites, with an option to download the recordings to a podcast for less bandwidth. We also have the re these recordings through the Media Gallery site, which is very interactive because it has some questions scattered throughout the lecture recordings to keep you engaged as you watch these videos. Now, what do these lecture recordings consist of? There's three parts, three different recordings. The first part aligns with part one and part two of your lecture notes. This recording introduces the new scenario, the comparison of two population means. It highlights the pooled versus unpooled inference procedures and works through the first confidence interval example. The second recording walks through part two and part three of chapter nine. It gives you a recap of this new concept of pooled versus unpooled inference procedures. It works through the second confidence interval example, and it covers the hypothesis testing side for difference in population means. And that last recording gives you a brief introduction to the big ideas behind ANOVA inference procedures. Now let's look at what your second task is going to be this week. First, you have to submit that pre-lab number nine, which is due March 23rd by eight in the morning, and then complete lab nine. You can access the information for lab nine, either through the pre-recorded video for this lab or by attending a live stream virtual lab on either Tuesday or Wednesday. And we have the full schedule on Canvas with the appropriate links. We recommend that you please complete Lab 9 wrap-up quiz soon after completing the lab material. And remember that a successful completion of the quiz implies full credit for all aspects of the lab. What is going to be your third task? Well, now that you have completed the first two tasks and have an understanding of the course content for this week, we recommend that you work through the problems on homework number eight, which is due Friday, March 27, and it is the last one before exam two. Did you attend our virtual office hours this week? We learned a lot this week about Canvas conferences, and we have decided to change the platform we use for office hours. Starting next week, we will have a new office hours page with available links to connect with our instructional team. Remember to stop by our many office hours, which are now virtual during the week, and attend optional lab check-ins with your lab instructors to get your questions answered. Now let's re-emphasize the important due dates for this week. The first thing you need to do is to wrap up that pair of data from this previous week. Doing so implies completing homework number seven, lab eight, and also to finish your MWrite peer reviews, which is all due before Sunday 22nd at 5 p.m. Your pre-lab number nine via Canvas is due Monday, March 23rd before 8 a.m. And then your lab nine wrap-up quiz is due before Friday, March 27th by 8 a.m. Your homework eight, the last one before that exam two, and then your MWrite final submission is due Sunday the 29th by 5 p.m. As some of you know, my daughter plays the piano and was invited this year to participate in an honors recital that would have taken place today, but it got canceled. Um, she has agreed to play for us one of the songs she was going to play during this recital. So here is my daughter, Ilani, playing one of the songs from her repertoire. I hope you enjoy it.
Looking ahead, exam 2 is on April 2nd from 6 to 7.30 p.m. The online exam will be available through coursework. We will make available an online practice exam 2 again through coursework starting Monday, March 30th. We will not have any new lecture recordings during exam week. We are giving students the opportunity to use this week to focus on studying and preparing for exam two. We're putting together many practice problems to help you review, practice, and reinforce your understanding of that material. More information will be shared with you on our next Friday Focus. So thank you for watching this Friday Focus. The Full Stats 250 instructional team is excited to continue to work with you and help guide your virtual learning of statistics. Bye.